Good evening, I'm John Yang. Violence spread in the Middle East today as a Jordanian gunman killed three Israelis at a sensitive crossing between the West Bank and Jordan. It was at the Allenby Bridge, which spans the Jordan River and is the main route for West Bank Palestinians to travel abroad. Israeli officials said the gunman approached from the Jordanian side, got out of a truck and opened fire at Israeli security guards who killed him in a shootout. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the attack was due to the war in Gaza. It's a hard day. A despicable terrorist murdered three of our citizens in cold blood at the Allenby Bridge. On behalf of the government, I send my condolences to the families of the murdered. And in Gaza, an Israeli airstrike killed five people, including two children and a senior official in the Civil Emergency Service, which handles Gaza's first responder operations. The mother of the 14-year-old accused of killing four people last week at that Georgia high school has told family members that she called the school the morning of the shooting to warn of an extreme emergency. Teen's aunt said her sister related in text messages that she told a school counselor her son was having homicidal and suicidal thoughts. The Washington Post reports a call log from the family's phone plan shows a call to the school about a half hour before the shooting began. Ukraine and Russia are trading blame for attacks that injured civilians in two border regions. In Russia, air attacks from Ukraine injured two people in Belgorod. And in the northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy, two people were killed and four others injured, including two children. Ukrainian officials say Russia is stepping up its attacks and targeting more populated areas. Cleanup efforts are underway in Vietnam, where the typhoon Yagi has left a trail of death, death and destruction. The massive storm is blamed for at least 14 deaths and nearly 200 injuries there. Officials say the typhoon was one of the most powerful to hit Vietnam in the last decade. Yagi, which is now downgraded to a tropical depression, has left 3 million people without power. Venezuela's opposition presidential candidate has fled the country days after the government ordered his arrest. Edmundo Gonzalez is now in exile in Spain after being granted asylum. The 75-year-old ran against President Nicolas Maduro in an election that independent observers say Gonzalez won. Today, his political partner, Maria Carino Machado, said Gonzalez felt his life was in danger. And Paris said farewell to the Paralympics today. Before the closing ceremony, Team USA closed out the day with three more medals, a silver in women's wheelchair basketball and a bronze each in men's para canoe and women's marathon. The United States finished the game's third in the overall medal count behind China and Great Britain. Still to come on PBS News Weekend, a new book looks at how Gen Z's politics is different from previous generations and the environmental impact of avocado production in Mexico. This is PBS News Weekend from WETA Studios in Washington, home of the PBS NewsHour, weeknights on PBS.